Welcome back to Whips in the Dungeon. Um, this episode, honestly, is probably going to be too long in length, and most of you won't make it through the entire video. But I recently did a video uh, called Rest in Peace, where I did a little memoriam to some whip makers that had passed away in the last few in the last year or a few years. And in the comments below that video, uh, someone suggested that I do a video on active whip makers. So I made a list. And uh, for those of you that know me, uh, in 20 years of throwing whips and collecting whips, I've collected over 70 single, single tails. Uh, and I got to thinking a few years ago that I needed to thin the herd down and uh, just so that my wife wouldn't have to figure out who made which whip when I finally do pass on to whip drawers heaven. So I thinned the herd and some of these whips and makers that I'm gonna talk about, I no longer actually own their whips. I've sold them um, through various means, but they are worth mentioning. They still plat and I'll give you my honest opinion about it. Now, some of these whip makers aren't gonna be happy with this video. I'm not gonna review any whip maker that I haven't actually gone through the process of purchasing, following a build, receiving the whip, breaking it in, and using it uh, in actual dungeon play or trying to use it in actual dungeon play. So let's first start with Casey Tyler. Casey Tyler uh, was referred to me by Peter Thorndike I approached Peter Thorndike to do a bullwhip for me, and at the time, he was not making bullwhips yet. Peter now actually does make bullwhips, and we're gonna review one of the Peter Thorndike bullwhips. But I ordered three whips from Casey Tyler, a six-foot bullwhip, a four-foot bullwhip, and a three-foot snake whip. And part of this is my fault. I told him I mentioned to him that I have a popped long bicep in my throwing arm and a torn rotator cuff. So he made me three what I consider very light whips, probably lighter than what his normal build was. Um, Casey's, in my opinion, one of the more expensive platters to go to. He plats an extremely nice whip, extremely smooth, can't feel any transitions. The whip, his whips have good rollout. Uh, my only fault with him, with my particular throwing style, I found his, his whips to float a little bit too much. And because of that float, they were targeting high. I successfully sold all three of those whips uh, and essentially got my investment back. Uh, the only downside to Casey is he doesn't have a website. You'll see his whips sold through a middle person, whether it's Western Stage Props or, uh, or Midwest Whips or some other whip maker or whip vendor. Um, but I contacted him directly by email and dealt directly with him. The downside for Casey is he wanted payment up front in full, and it was quite expensive. And I did it because I had been recommended to him by Peter Thorndike, uh, but I would, I would caution someone against paying in full upfront for a whip. Uh, in fact, after 20 years and getting stiff many times by builders, whip makers, my rule of thumb is never to pay for a whip in full upfront. Uh, when the order's placed. If they want a deposit, 50% deposit, is fine and then when the build is ready to be built because sometimes there's a year or longer waiting list when the build when your build comes up on a build list and it's ready to be built then 50 percent at that point is actually better or sometimes i'll do payment in full if i know the whip maker uh, but i prefer 50 percent down than when the whip is completed 50 percent plus shipping uh, to ship the whip to me. Um, so Casey wanted payment up front. It took quite a while to get the whips. Once I got the whips, they were very, very good whips. Just a little bit light for me. Um, 
But since we talked about Peter Thorndike, I'm holding a Peter Thorndike. This is a, a four foot 16 plat. Peter's whip is as close to a Mike Murphy build without it being Mike Murphy as to any whip I've thrown in my lifetime. Absolutely smooth as a baby's butt. The rollout is good. It targets exactly where I point it. Absolutely love this whip. So what are the downsides of ordering from Peter Thorndike? Well, I was on his wait list for a year uh, and he told me up front it would be a year long wait and evidently he knows his, uh, his build list and how long it takes him to make a whip because exactly 12 months after I contacted him on Facebook, he wrote me and asked me if I still wanted the whip. Okay, I did. At the point he was ready to build it, I paid for it in full up front, and I had the whip within probably two weeks. Uh, the only downside with ordering from Peter Thorndike is he's very expensive, in my opinion. In fact, all of the new generation of Australian platters, in my opinion, are overpriced. Uh, I would, I love his whip. I wouldn't order from him again just simply because of the cost. And you know, if you're if you're rich and can afford a Peter Thorndike, by all means, he's a great builder, a great whip maker. But I'm retired, and I can I can get equally good whips from. Uh, quality platters at less money, so I'm gonna do that. Uh, another whip maker that I, I'll talk about today is Evan Faber. Uh, Evan Faber is a US whip maker. His website is EF Whips. Evan makes a nice whip. It's not as smooth as a Thorndike. Uh, I don't like Evan Swips in the dungeon personally because of my style of throwing. I like to throw a forward figure eight, and I've had this whip probably six years now, and I throw it regularly in practice, and it's never broken into the point where I could say the natural rollout is good enough for me. Uh, Evan puts what I call a little too much Viagra in the upper part of the thong coming out of the handle. So his, trans, his bolster and his transition coming out of the handle is a little bit too heavy duty to achieve the kind of natural rollout I prefer. So if you compare that Viagra with the, um, with the Peter Thorndike Viagra, you can instantly see the difference the Thorndike has less Viagra. Uh, the Evan Faber has much more Diagra. The Thorndike's going to achieve natural rollout much easier, break in much quicker. This whip, I've had it for maybe six years. It's still not broken into the point. Now, on the other hand, if you throw a different style, if you're sport cracking mostly and you do a lot of volleying, that extra Viagra is going to help you out. So look, while we're talking about a whip with a little too much Viagra, let's move to a Trinity Whip Company whip or Blake Bruning. This is a, a Blake, Bruning, uh, Blake Bruning four foot 16 plat. Um, it, I believe it's his indoor indie model based on the profile and the way it looks. Uh, Blake's likes to plat in 12 plat. This is a 16 plat, so it's, a, it's mildly unusual for him. I think if you look on his website, almost everything he puts up there's 12 plat. So this particular whip, if you if you put the profile up against the Evan Fava whip, you'll see they almost have identical Viagra coming out of the handle. And that would be my hit on Bruning Swip 2. It's a little too, that Viagra makes it a little bit too springy in the dungeon. It doesn't roll out and make that control puff exactly where I point it. It is better years later than it was when I first got it, but it's never going to be uh, achieve the natural rollout that I would like to see in a whip. So, um, 
going back quickly to Evan's whip, Evan Fava's whip, that extra amount of agar coming out of the handle area, if you were throwing a signal whip, horizontal style, or what I call East Coast swing style, in the dungeon, that's actually gonna benefit you. So someone that's looking for a signal whip that has the money to spend, I would send them to Evan Fava at EF Whips. Evan makes an excellent signal whip, uh, and for horizontal East Coast swing style throwing is one of probably the, the better builders that are doing signal whips. Uh, again, Thorndike, Fava, Trinity Whips, they're all over a hundred or around a hundred dollars or over a hundred dollars. I want to per platted foot. I want to say Thorndike is like 125 or maybe 130 a platted foot, which is just simply too much for the average person. Uh, so let me look at my list real quick. Some of these I don't, these whips I don't own anymore. Simon Martin, an Australian platter. Simon's whips, very good. He had a one year build list. Uh, no deposit required. When my, my build came up, he wanted payment in full up front. I paid him within a week or a week and a half. I had my whip. Simon's whip has excellent natural rollout. Very easy to break in. It, um, uh, it was a little floaty, a, a little bit like uh, the Casey Tyler whip in that it floated a little too much. It, it targeted high for me. I ended up selling it to a very good friend who's interested in whips. Uh, but for someone that makes a nice rollout, Simon makes a very good whip. Cy Davies, another Australian whip maker who I had a couple of his whips and sold them. Uh, the hit on Cy is coming out of his handle. It's a little too loosey-goosey. It's almost like having a stock whip build, or, or a, it, it's almost loose as loose as a stock whip coming out of the handle once it's broken in. So the, to me, the bolster uh, transition from the handle to the thong isn't built uh, well enough to hold up for the kind of whip throwing I do, okay? Uh, it almost felt like I was throwing a stock whip that had a bull whip handle, and that would be the same comment I had on the Bill Glasgow whip. Bill Glasgow probably makes wonderful stock whips. He's an Australian builder, but when you migrate to a bull whip, his bull whip coming out of the handle was way too loosey goosey. Um, so Sharon Taylor at SKT Leather. Sharon makes uh, an excellent whip. I had a matched set of four and a half foot natural belly bull whips from her that I sold in my thinning the herd process. Uh, and I bought them years ago. I looked at her current price list, and to be honest, her her whips are a little pri uh, pricey. They're on the higher end of uh, the scale. So we come down to whips that I consider more moderately priced uh, from quality builders, and uh, one of those builders is, is Thea or Desert Minks at Mojave Outliers. This is a, a four foot 16 plat build. Anything that's under $100 a platted foot, I consider um, a moderately priced point and worth looking at if it's a quality whip because it's not gonna break the bank, okay? Um, Thea's whip has great natural rollout. It was a little bit tip heavy. I did a video, if you saw it recently, on balancing the whip and trimming the fall and it's almost perfectly balanced now it's it's still a tiny bit uh, tip heavy but she's sent me another sending me another fall and i'm going to do a video on showing how to change the fallout okay so whips by axel axel is uh, a pretty common name now 
in the kink scene or the fetish scene. And what I'll say about axle swip uh, is if you are at a vending show or at an event and you see an axle whip and you have a chance to examine it and throw it and you like it, buy it. My recommendation is not to buy a whip from Axel off of his website uh, because A, he wants payment in full up front, and B, you may or may not ever get your whip. I waited a year for this whip. I was in the process of trying to actually cancel my credit card uh, payment for it when magically overnight, almost overnight in 24 hours, he built this little three foot full whip and sent it to me. It, it rolls out okay with the thong, against the thong, or, or rolling it against the spine. It goes out and takes a jog to the left. So uh, many people swear by axle whips. It's fine if, if you enjoy throwing an axle and you find an axle that's a quality build, by all means, pick it up. I'm just giving you my personal experience. I wouldn't pay for a whip in full up front off of his website. In fact, I recommend not doing that off of any whip maker. Uh, don't pay in full and order directly off their website. Write them an email privately if they won't correspond with you and take a deposit or work with you on their build list until their build comes up, then keep walking. There are other whip makers out there. So let's see if I've covered everybody. EF Whips, Mojave Outliers, Sharon Taylor, Cy Davies, Sy Peter, uh, Simon Martin, Peter Thorndike. Oh, Johnny Ogren at Witchcraft Whips. Now, I'm mentioning Johnny because he was recommended me, to me by two other people. In, in transparency and honesty, I have not received a whip from him yet. I have corresponded with him. I'm on his build list. He's agreed to a 50% deposit when my name comes up on the build list and payment in full when the whip is done. And he's promised me an August date, which would be done for my birthday. So I will follow up with Johnny. Johnny Hitt comes highly recommended from another whip maker uh, that I do refer people to and from a whip thrower that I know, uh, D up in the Baltimore area has recommended Johnny. So we're gonna try Johnny out and see how it works at Witchcraft Whips. Um, there, the last whip maker, maker I'm going to feature is my go-to guy. And I say that because Peter Jack has been playing for 45 years, soon to be 46 years. Most platters burn out. They get carpal tunnel. They find a different job or they become ill and pass away to whip maker's heaven. So Peter is very unique. Uh, Peter's in that class of, of maker that makes a great 16 plat whip. I've owned higher plat count whips from him and I honestly prefer his 16 plat whip. Uh, why spend more when his 16 plat performs as well as it does? Uh, he's made me over 20 whips. He's never stiffed me on a build. Every single one of his whips I, uh, at the consistency of his product is one of the things that I like about Peter. I have a, a four foot target bull whip I started throwing in 2000. This whip was made in 2021. The consistency, the plaiting over the 20 years and the feel when it, when it rolls out the feel uh, is almost the same over 20 years. It, I think that's incredible that a platter can do that. And as a general rule of thumb, on most of his bills for 16 plat, he's around the 65 to $70 price point per platted foot. 
none of these other whip makers can touch a 65 to $70 price point per platted foot. Um, now Mojave Outliers by an axle, uh, they're under $100 a platted foot. Uh, the rest of the ones that I featured today are all well over $100 a platted foot, which in my retired on Social Security, um, I'm doing these little whip videos for you guys. That's too much money for me to pay. If I could buy a whip that's $65 a platted foot, and I could consistently roll it out and put it within a 4-inch to 6-inch target on someone's back in a dimly lit dungeon, why would I pay $150 a platted foot for a bullwhip? Well, maybe because I'm a collector, maybe because I was interested in seeing how this fellow made whips, but would I go back to that builder and order 20 whips? No, I would go back to the guy that's making me whips, quality whips, at about $65 a platted foot, and 20 years later, he's still making me quality whips at $65 a platted foot. Now, I'm not telling everybody to go out and buy a Peter Jack. I don't know how many more years Peter's going to be platting, and I am going to put websites, links, email addresses below uh, this current whip maker's review or uh, or video so that if you're interested in any of these whip makers, you can contact them directly. And again, I'm speaking from my experience, um, my experience dealing with the builder and, and making the whip delivering the whip and my experience throwing it in the dungeon. But that the disclaimer in all of that is, is my style of throwing prefers uh, a good natural rollout that finishes on target and that I can control that energy in that rollout in that puff. So, you know, that takes about half the builders that I covered today and puts them in a different category because the way they build whips doesn't fit with my style, okay? So it's kind of like uh, lasagna. Everybody makes lasagna a little bit differently and I have a preference in the kind of lasagna that I like. I hope you enjoyed today's video. My apology for it being so long, but when you cover 10 whip makers, takes a little bit of time and there's a lot of things that I could have said that I didn't say because again, it's already too long. But thanks again for watching Whips in the Dungeon and thanks for your questions. Now, if there's a whip maker that you like and that I didn't cover today, that you have practical experience with, you bought a whip from them, uh, you've thrown their whip, then by all means in the comment section below, add their name add their website, and tell us what you liked or didn't like about their whips. Thank you, as always, for watching Whips in the Dungeon.